Thank you, Dan and Mike and Rob. Um, really want to press some key issues here that you know we presented a lot of things uh, specific to toxic gas, but there are also multiple factors that um, we want to consider as well. It's like when you get haulers on the highway with traffic interactions, appropriate lighting and marking, uh, looking at machinery entanglements and noise exposure. So we highlighted a lot of things, especially in the hierarchy of safety. We want to make sure to eliminate hazards, provide safeguards and warnings, train and, and then provide PPE. I'm going to share a um, screenshot here of the uh, research and extension agenda for agricultural confined spaces. We talked a lot about uh, manure confined spaces as well as and you know thinking about open pit confined spaces and this publication is prevents so uh, the key issues that we would deal with with manure as well as other confined spaces in agriculture and that was provided by the committee uh, on agriculture safety and health and research and extension so just wanted to share that with you and, and now we'd like to facilitate some questions and answers the first question was uh, I assumed top dressing bedded stalls with lime is less risky than gypsum bedding since gypsum as sulfur. Is this a reasonable assumption and are there other bedding products to be concerned about? And Mike responded regarding hydrogen sulfide, yes lime would be a sor uh, would not be a source of, of hydrogen sulfide production. However, lime does not have all the benefits of gypsum. There exists a risk versus benefit issue. Fall man management is benefited greatly from gypsum as well as somatic cell count as well. In short, the goal is not to eliminate gypsum bedding use, but merely to raise awareness. Storages not containing gypsum still contain dangerous gases, even hydrogen sulfide. Our group does strongly urge against gypsum use for any understorage manure. Sure, Mike, you want to add to that? Yeah, no, I think you summed it up in my uh, written response, but. The real purpose of, of presenting my, uh, my slides was just to raise the awareness. Uh, gypsum is commonly used um, in, you know, in Pennsylvania, New York, and Maryland. Um, not sure about the rest of the country, but there is a risk versus reward. We did find elevated concentrations of hydrogen sulfide with more gypsum use, uh, with increased gypsum use. Um, we're not trying to eliminate a valid and beneficial stall management practice, but we do want to make people aware of the hazards that when using gypsum, when that ends up in a deep manure storage where it's anaerobic, hydrogen sulfide is, is going to be produced. Um, there are, you know, many stall practices, stall management practices that, that people use. Uh, gypsum is one of them. Uh, this is just a, a, a case where we did, did some observations and found that, that there's a, a potential risk when, when gypsum's used. So it's important for haulers that, that go to farms, if they know that it's, it's a gypsum farm, you know, it's just something to be aware of. If you don't mind, I'll add, add on to that, that, you know, anytime we have a feed ration ingredient that contains higher levels of sulfur, and we are seeing that with some uh, distilled products, at farms uh, that sulfur is, is a, co a component within those uh, feed by those byproduct feed ingredients that we can have increased risk um, other sulfur uh, sources at some farms might include the water itself we can have you know sulfur dissolved in the water that, that comes into the farm and also uh, foot baths can be a source of sulfur so there is a lot of sulfur avenues uh, getting into the animals and into the manure storage that we need to need to realize are there and, and possible contributors to H2S. All right, so we have another question in the box. Um, the and we'll come back to this. This one was once manure is removed from a below barn pit, what is the level of risk for worker workers pressure washing or doing maintenance in the animal? And so, Rob, you want to tackle that one, and you had put some comments in there. You want to tack on to that? Yeah, we often uh, may see removal of manure in the swine industry. For, for instance, we might drain the pit before we wash so that we uh, have an empty pit, but recharge it before the next animals come in. So that's kind of not an uncommon practice. Once we remove the manure, of course, we have a lower risk. But when we agitate or when we remove that manure, we have higher risk. Anytime we have animals or workers in those areas, 
above these under four storages, we need to have at a, the very least our minimum ventilation system operational, if not more uh, ventilation than that. So we never want to have ventilation shut down when we have animals or people in those buildings, whether there's manure in the pit or not. If manure is removed from the pit, we still have residual manure, we still have microbial activity, we still have gas production uh, that would be involved there. So the answer is always ventilate and never let your guard down. Complacency kills. And I don't know if Dan has more to add to that. Um, you know, what the question pertains to above the floor, but he's going to have more knowledge of what's happening under the floor. So I don't know if you want to chime in, Dan, at all. So, yeah, I mean, those activities, um, you always want to keep your barn ventilation running whenever you're dealing with manure inside the barn or underneath the floor. Um, you'd want to ventilate that manure pit for the minimum amount of time, plus to make sure that there's no uh, hydrogen sulfide gas left in that airspace. But you also want to be careful because there could be uh, places it is, it, the simulations are ideal. So anything happening outside the barn even, wind blowing against the barn fans as they're exhausting is going to change their performance a little bit. Um, so you always have to be careful and just assume that there's always going to be potential for you to encounter deadly gas if you enter a pit. Up above the barn, same thing. I would always assume, it, in simulations that I've run, I've always seen you're always going to get whatever that maximum concentration of the manure pit is. It's always going to be at that level somewhere in the barn airspace. It may only be in a, one zone right by the fans, but you're always going to have that. So if you have 500 parts per million, of hydrogen sulfide in that pit, you're going to have 500 ppm somewhere inside the barn. So that's one thing to be aware of. Um, and then the other thing to be aware of is just, just it's, it's uh, somewhat of a random thing. It, it, any environmental factors can change it. Temperature, humidity, wind outside, um, lots of things could happen. Someone could trip over a power cord, unplug a fan, um, brownouts, or, there's always a risk. So it's always a good idea to wear that personal safety monitor near your breathing space, uh, probably on a lapel or pocket of your shirt. Um, and I'd also monitor someplace in the barn, probably two or three places if you've got the monitors to do it. Um, the online tool is really designed to uh, give you kind of a what-if scenario of what could happen at different levels in the barn. So if I were doing this for my animals, I'd probably uh, run it for more than the maximum concentration I would expect to find in that pit and look at where the gases would collect or where they would flow through in the barn up above. And then I'd probably set my monitors in those locations um, so that I'd know if, if conditions were dangerous. Um, I, I don't know if that, I hope that helps. If there are any other specific questions, I can try to answer those. Thanks, Dan. That one kind of Talked on, touched on the, the question that was in the chat box about the TPELs and the, making sure that we have a safety factor. And you, you kind of made sure that, you know, you in your response, it was highlighting the need for personal monitors as, as well as monitors in the barn there. We have another question in the, in the question and answer box. Um, this one is, uh, what are some feed additives that might add sulfur? Uh, there was an incident the distiller serve was used in the ration and may have contributed to increased hydrogen sulfide levels. Um, Rob, you want to tackle that one? Yeah, I actually have read a recent report on that incident as well where distiller syrup did have an increased uh, sulfur level. So um, I, would, I would say yes, that you know, based on, on what I know from that scenario, that the sulfur in that feed ingredient uh, increased the sulfur probably of the ration and therefore increased the risk and may have had a been a contributing factor in that scenario. There was a lot going on with that, with that uh, incident, and I'm not completely familiar with all the details, but there, was all, there were uh, atmospheric conditions there that, that were kind of prime with very low wind and uh, a thermal inversion that was uh, on board that day that may have helped contribute to it. But certainly 
without a source of sulfur, we wouldn't have had hydrosulfide. And part of the sulfur source at that farm was the distilled syrup. So I think I think that's fair to say that's a contrib contributing factor. Yeah, I'll, I'll chime in here. I think that's accurate. Um, during our project with the, with the gypsum bedding, we did try to account for other sulfur sources, uh, distiller grains, and uh, the copper sulfate and foot baths. Um, these these didn't contribute as much as the gypsum bedding bedding contributed to some of the farms. Now, what we did find are farms that did use gypsum, but they may have used a uh, you know, maybe a half a quart of dusting of the first six inches and in part of the stall near the alleyway versus farms that use 100% gypsum for their bedding. And there was obviously a difference in hydrogen sulfide production. More, the more uh, gypsum you use, the more hydrogen sulfide is produced. Um, we found less effect for the copper sulfate foot baths and uh, the distiller's grains. Um, so it, it is a it is kind of a scale on hydrogen sulfide production. Thank you, Dan and Rob and, and Mike. We really appreciate your time. Um, thank you uh, for those of you who are joining us today. We really appreciate that. Um, we hope that we've helped provided some information that you'd be find useful and, and continue to protect those that work in agriculture. We uh, uh, like to bring it to a close and uh, uh, thank you for joining us.